greatest animated franchise of all time, possibly the most consistent film franchise of all time. It's going to be so hard to rank, but let's do it. To infinity and beyond. Hey everyone, my name's Jim and welcome back to my movie obsession, a place to film obsessors and geeky movie fans if you love to talk about retro movies, superhero movies and all recent movie talk and all that sort of stuff, please subscribe and we can discuss our movie obsession. So it's time to rank the Toy Story series from worst to best which is very difficult because every single one of these films is great but if we had to rank it, how would we do it? Well here we go, it's time to rank the Toy Story franchise. You are a sad, strange little man. And you have my pity. Let me know what your rankings are in the comments down below and let me know what you think of my ranking. So last but not least, an excellent sequel. A really good midpoint of the series when we thought the Toy Story 3 was the end because it kind of has Woody kind of thinking about things that he wasn't in the first film. He's thinking about Andy growing up. He's thinking about his place in the world. He's thinking about whether life is just about, you know, being, having love from a child or if there's more to it. Obviously in this film, Woody finds out that he is a, a doll who was part of a TV show. So there's more to his life and he meets his co-stars and he has to decide whether he wants to be a toy for children or if he wants to be, I guess, a toy celebrity. One thing I love about this film is that Jesse and the Prospector, the characters that Woody meets, who are his co-stars from the show, are like, I don't want to go to a child. I, I want to be uh, put on display as a, you know, a monumental toy of history. And again, the prospect is like, I don't want to be kept in storage. Well, if you're on display, you're basically in storage, mate. You've got people looking at you, but you're still frozen stiff. So you'd rather be frozen stiff than played with by a child where you might be able to at least move when he goes out of the room. I guess if they're on display, they can, but they'd just be like, you're right, mate. Yeah, yeah, we're enjoying this. Yeah, it's great being on display, isn't it? So much better than being in storage. I mean, or can they get out? I don't know, but Prospector has his heart set on being in on display, even though he's just in a box, which is surely how he'll be on display. Or at least he'll be on display just frozen still all day. And maybe they'll talk at night, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, what's so good about being on display? Of course, get Jesse, Bullseye and Prospector as three great new characters in this. Obviously, Jesse's the one who sticks around. Jesse, very sympathetic. A great idea to have kind of a female version of Woody, one who's been rejected by a child in her life. And it brings in the kind of growing pains of the franchise and it's a very emotional scene where Jessie recounts what happened when she was owned by a child and then disregarded. It's, it's absolutely heartbreaking guys. And Woody has to think, well maybe Andy will do that to me one day. And it's just a great film about accepting that change is inevitable but it's also about embracing that change and realising that it's best to live in the moment and if things are going to change you should enjoy the process of it getting to that change appreciate things while they're still there and live in the moment and that's what it's all about and it's also a film about um, love is better than uh, I guess notoriety uh, you know being valued is better than just being a celebrity I guess and I love how Buzz is now the leader he's took his place and he knows he owes it to Woody to pay him back for all the stuff he done to, for him in the first adventure they had and Buzz has to contend with a Buzz Lightyear in his film so Buzz meets another Buzz Lightyear who obviously thinks he's a space ranger so Buzz has to contend with the frustration that Woody had in the first film when Woody was trying to convince him he was a toy. Absolute riot and just a, an interesting contrast of Buzz seeing how bloody annoying he must have been to Woody. It didn't have the big wow factor of Toy Story 1 but that's not the film's fault because if the sequels go on you they have to become more familiar so if I had to rank one last it's Toy Story 2. What? What are you talking about? Next up is Toy Story 4. What a pleasant surprise. Everyone was like, should there be a Toy Story 4? Is it a cash grab? Is it a waste of time? And it came out and everyone was just like, yeah, this is the most consistent series of movies possibly ever. Toy Story 4 was such a great, great sequel. You know, it has everything that makes a Toy Story series work. It has friendship, it has humor, it has great new toys coming in and you know, standing tall with the other toys, being just as memorable as the other toys, just has that spark. It's still not gone, that sparkle. So for me, I wouldn't be that against seeing a Toy Story 5 because 
this film just shows you can take these toys and just put them into adventures and as long as you nail the fundamentals this is just gone forever as I've said in my review Tom Max and Tim Allen could be playing Buzz and Woody you know with their walking sticks and their Zimmer frames in the studio you know it's every possibility that could happen Toy Story 4 perfectly captures the feeling of being a child where it just basically says that children you can buy them the most amazing toy in the market but they might prefer a little crappy one from Toys R Us for 10p it's just how children are and that's what happens with Forky in this film and I like that it's just such an example of the filmmakers understanding childhood to a child a specific toy can have an emotional connection whereas a more expensive toy can mean nothing and I love that, it's, and Forky's amazing in this, Forky is a wonderful new character and he's so sympathetic and he's, he's heartwarming and he's a fork, he's a bloody spork, a fork a spork, a fork spork. Woody is great in this, he's transcending being a toy guys, he literally is, this is the most philosophical of the Toy Story movies. There are some pretty deep themes discussed in Toy Story 4 about existence, about who we are. Uh, but and you know about the nature of reality and uh, getting old and the finite nature of time but delivered through toys a cowboy doll I love the antique store setting in the film I think it does give the film a creepy edge I love the new characters a doll who is trying to steal Woody's parts so that she can have a voice box again and she can get sold she ends up being a really really sweet character who starts off as a villain and obviously you've got Duke Kaboom played by Keanu Reeves which is just Duke Kaboom you could just put Duke Kaboom on screen for the whole of Toy Story 4 and I'd still rank it at this level absolutely awesome he's just so hilarious he really is and Toy Story you know they're, they're still at the point where they can introduce characters who you care about who are funny who really do stand up if not more you know when you're watching this the new toys are kind of they're kind of phasing out Ham and Mr. Potato Head. They're not really in this film and Rex because they're actually better than them. And you never thought that would be the case. You never thought that they could be more memorable than the toys that were already in the film, but they are. You know, Duke Kaboom, even the two plush toys in this are absolutely priceless. So it's an example of Toy Story still nailing the fundamentals, the characters. This film never stops as well. It's really fast paced. It's exciting from minute one. The only downfall I'd have with the film is I wish Buzz Lightyear had more of a role. I guess it's Woody's story, it really is, and it does make sense for that. So Buzz isn't really needed in the film, which is probably one of the problems I have with the film. But it's nice to see him at least there, and when he's there, he is used very well. It's probably my only problem with Toy Story 4, Buzz isn't used as much, but it really is Woody's story. And if there's a Toy Story 5, just make it about Buzz. Let's, let's give Buzz a character piece. Don't you get it? You see the hat? I am Mrs. Nesbitt. <laughs> and you never thought that the film could reach the emotional levels of Toy Story 3. And it does. It's absolutely heart-wrenching moments in this and heartwarming moments. Again, the filmmakers just know how to press that button just to get the emotional reaction of the audience to a T. And just make you feel like you've gone through an experience and you feel like you've grown with the characters and feel like you want the characters to do well and you want things to work out and you just understand these characters just very very meticulously done in Toy Story 4 it wasn't just thrown out there so it really does deserve to be this place on the list next is Toy Story 3 the most I guess relatable of the series it's a film about obviously getting older and throwing away um, your memories of being young I guess, so your toys, your memorabilia from being young and it's about growing up basically and the toys are stuck with the fact that Andy has now grown up and is going to college and it's a really really emotional film in that respect, a very serious film in that respect I think this is the most serious of the Toy Story films and I don't mind saying guys I get a tear every time I watch the end of Toy Story 3 I think it's just expertly done the storytelling and you know the emotional connection you feel and more so at the point that you thought this was the final Toy Story movie because you had such a connection to these characters and you thought this was the end so it really did make that ending just tear you apart emotionally in the theatre when you first saw it but even now when I watch it it's still because it's the end of Andy's journey with the toys and it just it really just makes you well up it really really does and it is an example that Andy did care about his toys even though he grew up he still cares about his toys 
and it, you know you can you can think in the films do the kids actually really care about the toys because all they do is play with them and then they get tired of them but Andy when he has to let go of his toys you see that he does still care about his toys and that's nice because it shows that Woody wasn't always living for a facade that he thought Andy cared about him but he never did but Andy did and I like how they did that and it's just a, a fantastic emotional story, Toy Story 3. And I love the daycare centre plot in it. I love Lotso the bear. He's a great villain in the film. I think the escape from the daycare centre is one of the greatest sequences in the entire franchise. Wonderfully paced, wonderfully done, wonderfully staged, everything about it. And just constant obstacles. It's the biggest obstacles these toys have had to overcome biggest challenge they've ever had to overcome in an escape. Of course you've got hilarious characters like Ken and Barbie coming in, you've got Big Baby, so again Toy Story just once again introducing those new characters, making you care and just having you laugh your ass off at each one of them. Toy Story 3 is brilliant in every sense of the word, I absolutely love the movie and that's why it's so high on the list. Now Woody, he's been my pal for as long as I can remember. He's brave like a cowboy should be, and kind and smart. But the thing that makes Woody special is he'll never give up on you, ever. He'll be there for you, no matter what. You think you can take care of him for me? Okay then. So number one is, of course, how can it not be, Toy Story, released in 1995, this movie blew everyone's minds, I remember watching this as a kid, it absolutely blew my mind, and still to this day, even when you've seen the other Toy Story sequels, this still has that special spark, that's still there in the sequels, but here it feels like it shines brighter than any of them, basically. This is just an iconic animation masterpiece. And you know to see these effects in all their glory and to take yourself back to being a kid and seeing these effects, you were really witnessing a world you had never seen before. So the Buzz and Woody relationship is the centerpiece of this film and you never get to see this again. You never get to see them first getting to know each other. It's a very special process they go on in the film. Buzz starting off thinking he's a toy, Woody hating him for you know becoming Andy's new favorite toy and then them slowly getting closer together you know one of the downfalls i think with the sequels going forward which they do deal with very well but it's just you can never do that again you can never have that brilliant chemistry of of um tom Hanks and tim allen getting to know each other annoying each other on the road to friendship and that's one of the strongest points of toy story the friendship between buzz and woody is expertly written built up so well they have hilarious back and forth between them and you just love watching both of them. You absolutely adore these two characters that instantly grab you and just made everyone sit up and take notice. So I love Buzz and Woody and to see them for the first time come together, it really is an experience that we will never get again because these two characters are special and they really are a special pairing and to see that electricity and chemistry for the very first time is phenomenal. I love how Toy Story is indeed a grounded story. It wasn't the extravagant sort of chase movies of the sequels, it was literally uh, these toys trying to find their way home from across the street. You know, they weren't in a daycare centre, they weren't in an antique store, they were just across the street with the maniacal Sid. Sid, one of the funniest little bastards in movie history. This kid is just genius. I wish he could have been in each of the films. You know, the way that he tortures the toys, it's almost like Alex from Clockwork Orange in the way that he enjoys it. It's, it's almost like Alex is a clockwork orange, this is how he would have been as a kid. God knows what would have become of Sid in the future. He's just cracking jokes as he does it, seeing as he does it, and just enjoying it and being so menacing for a little kid. Patient is wrecked. No one's ever attempted a double bypass brain transplant before. Now for the tricky part. Players! I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. Doctor, you've done it! Hannah! Jenny's all better now. Ah! Ah! She's lying! Whatever she says, it's not true! And of course we have Buzz not thinking he's a toy, thinking he's a space ranger, which is just 
unbelievably funny and of course they kept bringing it back in the sequels because they knew how funny it was but this is the original Buzz Lightyear and nothing beats this you know just genuinely believing he's a space ranger the frustration of Woody at, at this toy who believes he is what he is and you know it's, what's interesting is that some toys in the future of this series for example Forky do think they are what they're what they are Forky thinks he's a fork he just wants to go in the trash did Woody once think he was a, you know, a cowboy and people had to talk him out of it and he just forgot that? But it's just his patience is not there for Buzz and just to see Buzz doing all these things that puts them in jeopardy because he believes he's a space ranger. Oh, it's, it has me rolling about in laughter. Right now poised at the edge of the galaxy, Emperor Zerg has been secretly building a weapon with the destructive capacity to annihilate an entire planet. I alone have information that reveals this weapon's only weakness. And you, my friend, are responsible for delaying my rendezvous with Star Command! You are a toy! You weren't the real Buzz Lightyear, you're, a, uh, you're an action figure! You are a child's plaything! I feel like Buzz, he kind of got a bit more boring in the sequels, because I think he's best when he believes he's a space ranger, because he's just so funny. But he is great when he realises he's a toy. I mean, this film really does have that journey of both characters. You know, Woody realising he needs to be more humble and Buzz realising that he needs to be more humble in realising that just because he's a small, uh, insignificant toy in his words, he can be a child's world. Toy Story is an unbelievable film. It really is. I think it's a five-star film. I think it's a classic. I think the pace is brilliant. I think there's exciting scenes. I think the animation is a spectacle to this day. And I just love everything about the first Toy Story. So there we have it, guys. There's my ranking of the Toy Story series. What are your thoughts on my ranking? And where do you rank the Toy Story series? It's a tough one to rank because every single film is great, basically. So you just kind of... It just, you know, it's interchangeable really, but Toy Story 1 is definitely the best. I, I don't think you can compete with it. People think Toy Story 3 is the best, or people think Toy Story 2 is the best, or 4. I feel already if it 1 has an unfair advantage over the sequels because it was the first of its kind, but it's just, I, I still get transported back to being a kid whenever I watch Toy Story 1. I just absolutely love it. So please consider subscribing. I talk about retro movies on the channel, superhero movies, geeky movie stuff and all sorts. So yeah, consider subscribing and we can discuss our movie obsession. Let me know your Toy Story ranking, comment down below. Please give the video a like and consider following me on Twitter in the description box. And I will see you guys in the next video.